Now, it's time to animate. Well, we can take the orbit camera tool and fly around our text, you know, do some different stuff, but I wanna kinda of show you a better way to use the After Effects camera, cause it can be a bit tricky when you start doing more complicated compositions. Complicated compositing and compositions while you're composing music for company. Anyway, um, what you wanna do is create a null object. So I'm gonna choose layer new null object. Now we talked about null objects previously, but I'm gonna kinda go over it again. I'm gonna choose null object and it's kinda created there. It starts out as a 2D object, but we wanna click on the 3D checkbox. Also, for any of the switches, you can just click on one and just drag down and it turns them all on for other layers. Or if you have a few layers selected and you turn it on for one, it turns it on for all of those ones. So any of the switches will allow you to do that. It's kind of nice. But now that our null object is 3D, what I'm gonna do is take the camera, take the parent whip and parent our null object. Okay, what have I done? I've basically taken this camera and instead of having to animate the anchor point, you know, like where the camera is looking and the camera and trying to make this all work, I've now created a null object that I can animate all by itself and I don't have to worry about any of the complexities of this camera for right now. So what I can do is simply animate the position of the null object. So if I hit P, I can kind of move these values around and you see the null object doesn't really move. Well, it does, but the camera is linked to the null object. And since we're looking through the camera, whatever I do moves the camera. And so the null object always seems to stay right in front of it. It's like being on a wagon and the wagon's pulling you around. You're always going to see, you know, the handle of the wagon. It's just pulling you around and, you know, pushing you down and taking your lunch money. So are sad times. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to move the current time indicator to the beginning of the comp. Uh-oh, our particles have disappeared. Well, they haven't disappeared, it's just they haven't been born yet. So if I take my particle layer, I can offset it. And so that it's already been emitting particles for a few seconds, and that way they'll be there the entire time. Now, in After Effects CS3, the nice thing is you can just extend layers on infinitely. Um, otherwise, you may just have to make your comp longer in order for the layers to be longer if you're working in an earlier version, but you'll figure it out. So here we are and our particles are up and we want to animate this null object. So I'm going to set the stopwatch for the position. Remember the position, letter P. Set the stopwatch. Move forward. Then I'm going to set a keyframe for the position. I'm going to click this back arrow, which takes me back to the other keyframe here. And I'm just going to, I don't know, X, Y, Z. I'm going to move us over a bit. So now you kind of see we kind of fly through this. Now, here's the thing. I want to have particles all over the place, and I don't see any particles over here. So I want to make our particle field larger. So if I go back to my particle layer, bring down my particle world, I bring up my producer or my emitter and I have my radius X, Y, Z. I want to make it bigger, taller, and longer. Now you spread it out, what do you do? Well, you make it seem like there's less particles. So we also want to increase the birth rate. So more babies. We can make this wider. Now I'm also going to increase the longevity of the particles. So they kind of stay up a little bit longer. They seem to be kind of turning on and off a little too much. And if you turn that up, you also want to turn the birth rate down, kind of even it out. So now if we look at our animation, looks pretty cool. Looks like we're really in 3D space. Now, the animation is going to be a little choppy, but let's check it out. I'm going to hit play forward, RAM preview. So really choppy. So I'm going to select this keyframe and hit F9. And if you remember, that's sort of the easy ease keyframe that's going to kind of smooth and slowly stop into that position. Then animate it. Okay, looking pretty good. Now, what if we want to do some more cool stuff like 
fly past this and, you know, I don't know, do something else. Well, no problem. What I'm going to do is take our logo, take the pan behind tool, because what I want to do is I want to take the rotation tool and rotate our layer, but I want to rotate around our star. So if I go to the pan behind tool, kind of move in here, I can move this pivot point right to the middle of this star. So now if I take the rotation tool, I can rotate around the z-axis and you can see it's kind of rotating in a circle around the star and that's what we want to do. So now we fly in, we'll pause for a moment, then we'll go to the logo, hit R, brings up the rotation and when a layer is 3D it's called orientation. So we'll set the orientation, move forward a little bit, X, Y, Z. So I want to move the Z up maybe 90 degrees. And it's good to work in numbers like that, 90, you know, 270, 45, 180, and animate that forward. Also select both of the keyframes here and hit F9. So it's kind of a nice smooth animation. And then I'll set a keyframe for my null object's position. Remember the null object is pulling the camera around. And then I'll move forward a bit and XYZ of my null object, I'm going to move the Z space forward. Maybe about right there. So, we animate, we see our title, it spins down, and we fly past it. Kind of like some space gate for After Effects. And okay, now we fly past it to what though? An empty field. So, let's create another text layer out in the distance. Now. I can create another text layer, or I can be lazy, go into my logo comp, alt, double click, copy this After Effects text, control C or edit, copy, go back to comp 2, edit, paste, and then turn on the 3D layer switch. Let's move it up so we can see it. There it is, looking good. We'll move it to the top of the stack so we can see it. And remember, 3D layers don't really matter too much, the order they're rendering, as long as they're all next to other 3D layers. But you'll, you'll figure that out along the way. Um, now, if I zoom in here, we have our X, Y, Z axis. I'm going to roll over the Z axis, and I'm going to push this back. Now, it's kind of going slow as I'm moving it. Now, if I hold down Shift, it moves at a value of times 10, so it goes a lot faster. Now, I've pushed it back there, and I'll move it up too just so we can see it, and it's way back there. Then if I move forward on my animation, you can see we kind of close in on it. Then I can reposition it so that it's squared up with the camera. So, turn on my title safe here, and we'll bring it close to the camera here. Well, not close, but a normal size, and then we'll move it here. Shut off our title safe. And now we can kind of watch the animation. So here it is, and then there's our After Effects text. But the problem is our text is back there and we can see it doesn't, doesn't quite look right. So what we'll do is during this transition, if I select the null object and hit the letter U, we can look at our keyframes. And the keyframes are kind of the key, you like that? Keyframes are the key to creating good animation. So for the After Effects layer, I want the opacity to fade in as the camera moves forward. So I'm going to hit the letter T, bring up the opacity, set a keyframe at 0%. Then I'm going to move forward to right when the camera stops and turn the opacity up to 100. So now I'm hitting negative and plus on the uh, keyboard there to move in. Oh, I don't know if I talked about this, but if you haven't figured it out already, layers can be kind of clipped or trimmed by just clicking and dragging the in and out points. And you can kind of move them around, do all that stuff. So I don't know if I talked about that. But focus here. Here's our After Effects layer, and it now fades in as the camera moves on. So let's preview this. Now, Let's add some motion blur, but there is one slight problem. The particle generator doesn't generate real looking motion blur. So After Effects has sort of a solution. I'm going to create a new 
adjustment layer. And remember, an adjustment layer is a layer you add effects to that affect the layers beneath it. For example, if I were to choose effect, color correction, hue and saturation, I could desaturate the entire composition with this one effect or, you know, add saturation or brighten it or whatever. But I don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to go to my effects and preset, type in force motion blur. Here it is. I'm going to drag it out onto my adjustment layer. And it's already set up with some good settings. Now, if we look at this during a fast moment, you'll see we are sort of rendering out motion blur. Now we can turn the shutter angle up or the motion blur amount and that'll kind of streak it even longer. But it starts breaking up a bit and you may want to increase the uh, samples. See the blur samples. 16 is pretty good, but remember, the more samples, the longer it's going to take to render. But we'll uh, caution to the wind on this one. So it kind of flies in now. The cool part is when it's going to kind of zoom past See, that looks really good when we kind of fly past all of the layers, kind of have sort of a uh, space warp effect. And you can also add more particles. Now, these particles are a little dead, and I'm going to shut the blur off of the adjustment layer while we work because it does take some time to render. Now, we can add a little life to our particles. So with that particle layer selected, I can go into the physics, change the animation to maybe like a vortex and turn the velocity up just a little bit and that way they just sort of move around a bit you know maybe even less than that point zero two and that way they just have a little bit of life why you know you're kind of static I'm trying to wrap this up but I just want to keep showing you cool things so one more cool thing just uh, you know don't stay up too late watching these now here's our null object and we've animated to this After Effects title. So now we have one more title and we're done, right? So I'm going to move forward because we want our title to be up for a moment. Set another keyframe for the position. And then I'm also going to set a keyframe for the orientation at this point in time. So that, let me shut off our motion blur again so that we're not taxed here. So it flies in. We go to the next title. It pauses for a moment. And then we want it to do something else. Now, we could fly past it again or do something else, but what if we change the orientation of the null object? Rotated the world, flew around the world like this, or any other number of ways. Now, our title is not the center of what the camera is looking at, as you can see the null object is. But what if we can move our title to be right where the null object is so that our camera was flying around it specifically? Well, After Effects has a lot of tools for looking at things in 3D. And if we go here to the active camera and we go to the top view, it's going to look kind of like a bird's eye view down on our layers. There's our particles. And, you know, if you select layers, you can kind of see where they're at. You know, here's our logo right here. And here's our camera, and here's our After Effects text layer. So remember the second title. It's way up here. It's way up north. And if I go in here, I can see where my null object is, too. Here's my null object. After Effects title, null object. So how can I sync those together? Well, what I can do is take the After Effects layer, which is right here, and move it in line with the null object. And to do that, I just go to the Z-axis here, roll over, and just push it until it lines up. You can also roll the mouse button to zoom in to really refine it or use your up and down arrow keys to get it just right. So now I've lined it up, but now it's going to be further in space and probably a little bit smaller. So now if I go back to our active camera, now I can see that my After Effects text is a little bit smaller than before. So instead of even worrying about moving it, I'm just going to scale it up and then reposition it. So now we're basically where we left off. Everything should still animate the same. Except now our camera pivot point, or in this case our null object, remember our wagon that's pulling the camera around and rotating it, our null object can now be rotated to fly around. So 
what I can do, is, well, I can do a lot of things. You know, I can fly upward and, you know, have another title waiting for me up here, spin around, and even move around. So what I'll do is I'll hit U on the keyboard, and we'll go to the end of our animation. So it animates to our After Effects title. It holds for a moment. We set our keyframe for the position and the orientation or the rotation. And I'm going to just move forward a little bit. So what can we do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rotate on the Y axis. And I hold down Shift and it'll snap to that rotation. And I'm going to select these two keyframes, hit F9, so that we have a nice smooth animation. And now we've sort of stopped here. And then I can shut this After Effects layer off so that we don't see it. And I can do that by selecting the layer and hitting Alt in bracket. Or just dragging it in and holding down Shift and it'll snap to the CTI or the current time indicator. Okay, so now we need another title to be here. So let's duplicate the After Effects title. And now we'll take our After Effects title, take the Rotation tool, and rotate it this way. So now it's facing the camera. We'll move it into position. So if we look at the animation, look what's happening. We go from one title to the next title. Now the trick is going to be animating this in a way that looks good. So first thing, we'll uh, make our second After Effects layer longer and then the beginning of it shorter so that it overlaps less. And let's figure out what we can do. So right here is about when we should start seeing it. So I'm going to trim it to right there so that before you don't see it and then once it starts coming around, that's when you start seeing it. Now we also want to fade out the first layer. So I'll hit T, set a keyframe for the opacity, move forward, fade it out. And now we have our new layer and then we can double click on it and change it to uh, now in 3D. It's always been, but oh well. So that it kind of comes into play here. Now, our layer isn't quite lined up, so let's go and line it up. And let's make sure that our animation looks OK. I mean, obviously, your imagination is what's limiting this effect. If you want to do anything you can, it's just a matter of putting the layers into the proper position and, you know, making sure the null object, you know, rotates around a specific point in order to do that. Um, but obviously, you know, with this 3D engine, there's a lot of possibilities. Now, what is this tutorial on? Is, are we talking about titling or are we talking about 3D? Um, I don't remember. But I'm glad we got a lot of the 3D stuff in. Um, I know a lot of people uh, are curious about it and, uh, you know, I didn't mean to throw this all at you at the intermediate level, although I suspect there's some people out there watching this that know a few things about After Effects. But that's okay, because, uh, you know, I uh, try, to, try to mix it up and put some good tips in there for everybody. In fact, you guys want to know a really good tip right now? Right now? Let me think of one. I got nothing. Okay, let's check it out. Whoosh, All right, uh, this tutorial took way longer than I wanted it to, but hey, uh, I hope you guys found some useful tips. Let me go down to my list, make sure I covered everything. Um, we're good to go. All right, remember to check out videocopilot.net for some more advanced tutorials. I don't know if they're more advanced than this one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time.